scrolling through the headlines Another crazy day Six degrees of snowy Welcome to our stock market briefing program. Today, we're diving into some electrifying headlines that are shaking up the financial world. First off, Terraform Labs has agreed to a massive $4.47 billion settlement with the SEC after being found guilty of defrauding cryptocurrency investors. This settlement, which includes hefty fines and bankruptcy proceedings, marks a significant moment in the crypto world. Stay tuned for all the juicy details on this case and what it means for the future of crypto regulations. Next up, we're exploring the strategic moves by Taiwan's tech giants as they shift production to Southeast Asia. With geopolitical tensions on the rise, companies like Acer are diversifying their operations to countries like India, Vietnam, and Thailand. This move is not only about hedging political risks but also about tapping into new markets and reducing shipping costs. We'll break down the implications of this shift and how it could reshape the global tech landscape. Lastly, Broadcom is making waves with a stellar earnings report and a 10 for one stock split that has investors buzzing. The semiconductor giant's strong financial performance and strategic stock split have sent its share soaring. We'll dive into the numbers and what this means for Broadcom's future growth and market position. Please stay tuned for detailed coverage on these exciting stories. Nikkei Asia reports that Terraform Labs has reached a monumental $4.47 billion civil settlement with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, following a jury's decision that found the company guilty of defrauding cryptocurrency investors. These investors collectively lost around $40 billion when the TerraUSD and Luna tokens collapsed in 2022. The judgment, pending approval by U.S. District Judge Jed Rakoff, includes $4.05 billion in disgorgement, interest, and a $420 million civil fine. Terraform's founder, Duquan, is also required to transfer $204.3 million to the company's bankruptcy estate and is banned from crypto transactions. The SEC accused Terraform and Quan of misleading investors about the stability of TerraUSD and falsely claiming that their blockchain was used in a popular Korean mobile payment app. Quan, who has been detained in Montenegro since March 2023, did not attend the trial and faces extradition to the US and South Korea on criminal charges. The Sydney Morning Herald highlights the cautious optimism on Wall Street despite the US Federal Reserve's decision to reduce the number of expected rate cuts from 3 to 1 for this year. This decision followed encouraging inflation data, with the headline Consumer Price Index, CPI, flatlining in May and core inflation rates coming in lower than expected. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell noted that while the data is promising, it is still too early to make definitive conclusions. The Fed's projections now show a single 25 basis point rate cut this year, although some members anticipate up to two cuts if inflation continues to cool. Investors remain optimistic, buoyed by the belief that the global fight against post-pandemic inflation is making progress. This sentiment was reinforced by recent rate cuts from the Bank of Canada and the European Central Bank suggesting a shift in focus from inflation control to economic growth. Japan Times reports that the Federal Reserve has decided to keep interest rates steady and has pushed the timeline for potential rate cuts to possibly December. Fed Chair Jerome Powell explained that policymakers are waiting for clearer economic signals before making any changes, particularly looking for a more convincing decline in price pressures or a significant increase in the unemployment rate. Despite inflation falling without major economic disruptions, Powell emphasized that the Fed is prepared to maintain current rates until more definitive economic changes occur. This cautious approach reflects the Fed's commitment to balancing inflation control with economic stability, aiming to avoid premature actions that could destabilize the economy. South China Morning Post Taiwan's tech sector, renowned for its prowess in PC and semiconductor production, is diversifying its geographical footprint to mitigate geopolitical risks. Acer, a leading PC vendor, expanded its operations in India by partnering with a local startup, mirroring a broader trend among Taiwanese tech firms. These companies, including giants like TSMC, are increasingly shifting some production to countries like Vietnam, Thailand, and India, driven by lower labor costs, improving infrastructure, and favorable government policies. This strategic move is partly a response to the U.S.-China trade war, which has complicated business operations for Taiwanese firms. By setting up local assembly lines in countries like Indonesia and India, Acer and others aim to ensure continuity in case of disruptions. For instance, Cisgration is exploring Vietnam for its automotive electronics, leveraging the proximity to China for logistical advantages. 
This diversification is not just about reducing dependency on China but also about tapping into new markets and labor pools, with significant investments flowing into Southeast Asia and South America. South China Morning Post Associated Press. U.S. intelligence officials have heightened their vigilance against foreign disinformation campaigns targeting the 2024 presidential election. These efforts have led to an increase in warnings issued to political candidates and organizations, reflecting both a growing threat and improved detection capabilities. Nations like Russia, China, and Iran are at the forefront of these influence operations, employing tactics ranging from misleading social media posts to sophisticated AI-generated deepfakes. Russia, in particular, aims to undermine public support for Ukraine and erode confidence in American democracy. China, while more cautious, remains a significant player, and Iran acts as a chaos agent, experimenting with various online techniques. The Foreign Malign Influence Center, responsible for these efforts, focuses exclusively on foreign threats, avoiding any domestic political entanglements. The rise of AI technology poses new challenges, as adversaries can create convincing fake content to mislead voters, a tactic already observed in other countries' elections. Nikkei Asia reports that Sumitomo Mitsui Trust Holdings has launched a new investment fund focusing on private assets in collaboration with US-based Apollo Global Management. This move comes in response to the increasing demand for alternative assets in Japan. These assets, which include unlisted equity, debt, and infrastructure, are not traded on public markets and are known for their long-term stable returns. The Japanese financial giant has committed $1.5 billion to a portfolio managed by Apollo and plans to invest 500 billion yen $3.18 billion, in asset managers to expand its private assets portfolio to 24 trillion yen by fiscal 2030. Despite Japan's relatively small market for private assets, the partnership with Apollo has sparked growing interest among retail investors. Sumitomo Mitsui Trust Holdings is also set to introduce a product for pension clients this fiscal year, aiming to increase the wealth of individuals receiving pension payments. According to the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, Australian stocks are expected to rise following a rally on Wall Street, driven by softer consumer price index CPI, data. This optimism is bolstered by the anticipated release of key labor force data by the Bureau of Statistics at 11.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, which is expected to show a slight decrease in the unemployment rate to 4% in May from 4.1% in April. The live blog will provide updates on market movements throughout the day, reflecting the influence of both domestic economic indicators and international market trends. Yahoo! US highlights Broadcom's impressive financial performance and strategic moves, which have led to a significant increase in its stock price. The semiconductor and software company reported a 43% year-over-year revenue increase for the quarter ending May 5, reaching $12.49 billion and surpassing Wall Street's expectations of $12.1 billion. Additionally, Broadcom announced a 10-4-1 stock split, further boosting investor confidence. This strong performance underscores Broadcom's robust market position and its ability to exceed financial projections, fostering positive sentiment among shareholders and the broader market. Bloomberg. Blackstone Incorporated has paused its $1.275 billion bond sale backed by commercial real estate debt amidst a surge in debt issuance. The bond, supported by mortgage debt tied to over 60 industrial properties across 13 states, was being sold by a consortium of banks including Morgan Stanley and Bank of America. However, the widening spread on the bonds led to the decision to halt the sale, according to insiders. 
This refinancing deal was not tied to any upcoming maturities, and the issuance of commercial mortgage-backed securities, CMBS, has seen a significant increase, with Blackstone playing a dominant role in this market. The company has refinanced about $15 billion in CMBS loans this year, contributing to the overall issuance of $42.8 billion, a 180% increase from the same period last year. The halted deal was expected to refinance $714 million of existing debt and return $182 million of equity to a Blackstone affiliate. Bloomberg. The Bank of Japan, BOJ, is expected to consider reducing its bond purchases at its upcoming policy meeting, with investors keenly watching for any hints of a potential interest rate hike in July. Governor Kazuo Ueda's policy board is anticipated to keep the benchmark rate between 0 and 0.1%, with more than half of economists surveyed predicting a slowdown in bond buying from the current 6 trillion yen per month. This potential reduction would mark the BOJ's first step toward quantitative tightening since ending its massive stimulus program in March. The yen's reaction to the decision will be closely monitored, especially after the currency fell to a 34-year low following the April meeting, prompting government intervention. Any changes in bond buying are expected to be gradual to avoid surprising market participants, similar to the Federal Reserve's approach. The BOJ's policy statement and UEDA's press conference will provide further insights into the bank's future policy path. Yahoo US. Manolo Blahnik's iconic Mary Jane shoe celebrates its 30th anniversary, cementing its status as a pop culture staple. The shoe gained widespread fame through memorable appearances, such as in Sex and the City and The Wolf of Wall Street, but it was supermodel Kate Moss who truly made it the shoe of desire. After modeling them in British Vogue in 1994, Moss requested multiple pairs, solidifying their iconic status. Blanick originally designed the Mary Jane as a minimalist piece with a pointed toe and high heel, diverging from his earlier Baroque-inspired designs. The label celebrated this milestone with an intimate dinner and performance by Diana Agron at Nine Orchard. CEO Christina Blanick emphasized the importance of the brand's enduring silhouettes, including the Carolyn slingback pump and the Chaos ankle strap sandal as the company expands globally, particularly in Asia and the US. The brand's men's collection also features timeless styles like the Perry Loafers and the Samando Sneaker. <music> Yahoo US Nikkei Asia. In Japan, the rising market values of precious metals have turned silver dental crowns into lucrative assets. Shikokan, a company in Hyogo Prefecture, has seen a significant increase in purchases of silver crowns, with some days witnessing acquisitions of up to 10 kilograms. Silver crowns, composed of gold, silver, and palladium alloys, have doubled in value over the past five years. The surge in silver prices, which averaged $23.50 per troy ounce last year, has made these dental crowns more valuable, attracting both individuals and dental offices looking to cash in. However, this boom has also led to an increase in metal thefts across Japan, with cases tripling since 2020, targeting items like steel plates, copper cables, and manhole covers. CNN. A new real-time inflation gauge called Truflation is gaining traction among traders and economists for its ability to provide daily updates on price changes addressing some limitations of traditional government reports like the Consumer Price Index, CPI, and Personal Consumption Expenditures, PCE. Truflation uses data from over 60 sources, including Amazon and Walmart, to calculate inflation rates, offering a more immediate snapshot of economic conditions. As of Wednesday, Truflation estimated the annual inflation rate at 2.23%, close to the Federal Reserve's 2% target, compared to the CPI's 3.3% for May. Wall Street traders and former Fed advisors like Danielle DiMartino Booth are using Truflation data to anticipate government inflation reports and identify emerging price pressures, although it remains unclear how extensively the Federal Reserve itself is utilizing this new data source. 